नमस्ते गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन माई सेल्फ उदय माका वाला सीईओ अटल इंक्यूबेशन सेंटर राम भाव मालगी प्रबोधिनी विच इज सपोर्टेड बाई अटल इनोवेशन मिशन नीति आयोग गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया वेलकम टू द फिफ्थ एपिसोड ऑफ बातचीत वेर इन आर एंडेवर इज टू हैव सिंपल कॉन्वर्जेशन एंड लर्न फ्रॉम ईच अदर्स एक्सपीरियंसिस वी नो दिज आर चैलेंजिंग टाइम्स सो प्रेयर्स एंड विशेज टू दो आर अफेक्टेड ड्यू टू दिस पैंडमिक today we are going to talk about uh, sustainable transformation through behavioral change uh, as all the all these are key words at this particular moment uh, in the current times and very important that uh, we really need to ensure uh, that uh, there is sustainability and the behaviors through which i mean in the recent times and that's where uh, we thought that uh, let's do this uh, baatchit uh, with our mentor and uh, our incubatee uh, and uh, definitely we would share our collaborative effort as well so that uh, we all can learn from each other's experiences as i said earlier uh, so for this we have uh, professor manisha fadke founding director uh, design school we have an entrepreneur uh, our incubatee uh, that's rajiv from the gamification company the icrmp he has been incubated rather few of our early incubatees uh, uh, at the center uh, we also uh, try and strive for unique programs with community building approach uh, resulting in impact so here we are uh, let's just uh, get on to our uh, experience sharing learning from each other and our work so let me first introduce prof manisha fadke uh, she is an alumnus of idc as a professional career spanning over 30 years demonstrating a constant uh, endeavor to imbibe and reskill to future driven design frontiers uh, that's very important out here starting out in graphic and information design moving into experience design graduating and graduating to design led strategy she has built mentored and managed uh, multidisciplinary teams uh, each time unleashing channelizing the creativity while imbibing cultural diversity required to work globally in t- in 2017 that's almost 4 uh, years back she founded a transdisciplinary school of design uh, at nmims deemed deemed to be university mumbai campus uh, the school envisions to uh, a professional and uh, future scoping design education that is multidisciplinary collaborative technology uh, permitted and data driven the school offers a unique uh, undergraduate uh, design uh, program in humanizing technology now out here humanizing technology that's a very interesting uh, element to this entire endeavor so welcome to the show uh, manisha ma'am and uh, over to you and rajiv uh, as my job is just to facilitate i always say that uh, incubators role is always to facilitate and in today's session as well i am there just as a sutradhar uh ensuring that the and i'm pretty confident that the discussion is going to be enriching and engaging for the next uh, 35 to 40 minutes so over to you manisha ma'am looking forward um uh, thank you uh, mr uday uh, and um, thank you again for just inviting me to uh, a discussion that uh, we were just talking about that is relevant and actually interesting from uh, my point of view and my expertise so i'm really looking forward to uh, talking with uh, rajiv but i think before we get there let me just introduce this uh, this personality right so rajiv chaudhary uh, is a gamification evangelist a transformation and growth engine specialist and an executive coach and entrepreneur so which in turn uh, he deals with the mind and body in uh, probably to give you business value currently he is the founder founder and managing director of uh, two companies which is the parshala learning solutions and the company that mr uday was mentioning the gamification company very intriguing name really uh, which is being incubated at the aicrmp uh, he has over 28 years of operational consulting uh, experience spanning BFSI hospitality hospitality travel telecom bpo education industry so it's a red wide spread and like i mentioned earlier for all those people who have been who are here from the startup world he brings in a lot of experience being the founder of 
two such ones, which is Patshala Learning Solutions and the Gamification Company. I think what is um, important about his company, we will learn uh, in just a bit. And uh, let's get to the current topic. Okay, so before I begin um, talking about the current topic to him, let's just set a stage of uh, what is sustainability in uh, and what's the other aspect, which is behavioral design. These are two, um, uh, if you say they're quite close, they walk the same cycle, but yet they're two distinct uh, streams that come together. So if I want to just uh, look at uh, these two streams and why it's important today, and I urge the startup world to really think about it in a different manner to help the times that we are here today. So COVID, um, if I have to say behaviors in COVID, it's, it's, I, it's a no brainer. If you had got our behaviors right, maybe the second wave would have, wouldn't have been as, as expansive as it is today. So how do we uh, change behaviors? How do we alter what we think and behave for a better cause? So when I look at sustainability, of course, sustainability, like you and me all understand, it's environment, right? It concerns with what we have done. And COVID, in a way, the global warming is one or two such ex uh, uh, such points, but there is another aspect of sustainability which we look at in design, and <clears throat> Rajiv also looks at and really propagates it through his company is business value. So, how are you going to build solutions giving that kind of sustainability, which is, of course, scalability is a part of it, and how uh, the science of what is intriguing to me from here is the fact that it is neuroscience. So designers always claim and do empathy research, but now in the current times, especially when we are not really meeting the users face to face and can observe them, what is the other fallback that we can do to be more attuned to what we build? And I think I would love to hear that from you, Rajiv. How are you looking at, uh, what's your view on the topic that we have discussed, Prima Facia, before we go to how you use it in your company? Yeah? Over to you. Right. So, uh, good evening, Dr. Anisha, and uh, thank you very much for the nice introduction. Good evening, Uday, and uh, for whoever's listening uh, into our talk, good evening. Very, very happy to be here. Uh, so, very interesting question. Actually, you started off with uh, COVID, and you started off with uh, with the entire aspect of sustainability and, and sustainable behaviors. Now, if you think about it. Uh, Today, uh, and, and when we talk about sustainable behaviors, what would be a sign of a sustainable behavior in the longer run, uh, taking a lesson from or maybe taking a page of the COVID book? COVID's happened, it's suddenly woken us, uh, woken us up on, on, on the back of what can a virus do. So we are now walking around wearing masks, et cetera. But all, the, I mean, all of this thing that we're doing right now, the mask that we're wearing or choosing not to wear, it's coming from a certain emotion. Now, the fact of the matter remains is that if COVID can hit us now, maybe a few years down the line, when we've possibly forgotten about the fear of COVID, it can come again. Something else can come in in form of COVID. So what do we do then? Do we then go back and again start wearing masks? So then that actually is an example of where a behavior has not been sustained. A sustained behavior would be that, okay, fine, we've seen the benefit of doing something like this. Can we extend this behavior of possibly wearing a mask, and which is a behavior uh, very commonly followed by the Japanese, by the way. The Japanese citizen, wherever they go, whenever they go, whenever they step out, are always wearing a mask. And can we make that as a part of our normal behavior? Uh, and and that's, a, that's a big challenge, right? Because, and that's where the design comes into play. And it's an interesting question that you've asked. So if you think about us as human beings, uh, we are driven by two emotions, pursuance of pleasure, avoidance of pain, right? And, and then this point of time, uh, the entire behavior of wearing a, uh, wearing a mask is coming in from avoidance of pain and it is coming from a limbic brain response. And the limbic brain response would be the threat response. And everything is driven by in form of a threat. Everything is driven by in form of a fear. So the brain at some point of time will give up on the fear and start rejecting it. So then automatically the behavior doesn't become sustainable. So if we really want to make it sustainable, 
can we think about uh, and and if you think about the entire thing as a design principle making people wear mask as a design principle challenge can we think about balancing the fear and a pursuance of pleasure and say that hey and maybe in form of an incentivization or something like that and say where then over a period of time wearing the mask when you're stepping out of home and when you're in a public space becomes a way of life you cannot make it a way of life by just following avoidance of pain or maybe from a threat response you'll have to balance it out and that's where the behavioral design comes in and when you are able to balance the two that's when sustainability comes in that's when a sustainable shift in behavior comes in you know very true and i think that was a good detailed answer i think we have set the stage um i'm also um wanting to uh, conclude on the topic bit and saying that and to take it further from what you said is we are governed by perception and emotions these are the two things uh, that we are governed by and uh, if we can work around that and another example is work from home in your startup culture i mean i i know that if you join a startup or if you're a founder it's uh, 24 by 7 every hour of the day but right now the work from home culture is also become that and if we need to sustain that i think the project and there are uh, solutions that maybe startups such as yourself can actually work around and say how do we make this behavior sustainable to get the most it's not either or but it is mostly get the best from the solution there so with that said i think uh, what i'd like to know which is interesting that uh, is that um, you know a like maybe two decades i think design thinking became a big uh, buzzword right we got into business and if you look at um, some of the papers written by design education is concerned also it's considered as a milestone where design uh, thinking or designerly way of looking at uh, situations and uh, problems became a part of the uh, business now why was that happening because that properly give gave them a better user centricity and then price was not just the leverage point it was more than that right so given that um where do you think uh, uh, in these two companies that you're looking at one is social science has come which is one of them that you are talking about and uh, neuro marketing or neuro science is a subset in a sub sub subset of social science so given all this uh what kind of a service offering are you doing so in in a set in a uh, in a question i would like to ask you so what was your seed thought that led uh to this gamification company the gamification company was it a uh, similar ethos as patshala or you wanted to you found a subset of patshala how how did you get on to this bandwagon that's a that's a very interesting uh transition for us because it, with patshala we were largely working in the space of behavioral sciences anyway and uh, we decided to move into the product space and on the back of certain client requests we started looking at how do we build a lot more engagement and engagement became a very important uh, factor for practically almost all our clients whether it's in the learning space or it's in the business process space because retention of learning retention of business or, or change of behaviors in in terms of business processes uh that was very largely dependent on how engaged employees were towards both the learning concept as well as the business process concept by itself so more than the if if you think about the learning and the business process concepts as something that we are doing what would go in establishing the belief towards that and when we are talking about establishing a belief it was about building new neuron highways in the brain because there are existing perceptions that exist existing uh, uh methodologies that people apply that exist and for people to change change is never easy there is always a small percentage of people who uh, adapt and adopt to change very quickly but that's really a small percentage the larger population struggles and and the struggle to change can come from again come from anything come from uh, the fact that i've seen a certain way of working and i've seen success and so i don't want to change or i'm scared about making a change and hence i don't want to change so when you really want to make that change happen you need to build these new neuron connections and that can only happen if there is no threat response and and the threat response is that limbic brain reaction that i keep talking about and and only when the limbic brain is suppressed is when the prefrontal cortex which is the portion of the brain that sits here it's open that's where all the withheld intelligence absorption everything sits now 
that by neuroscience of play. And that's where we actually came across neuroscience of play. What neuroscience of play says is that when you take the brain to a state of play and, and, and automatically the limbic brain gets uh, suppressed and the prefrontal cortex opens up. And if you think back and your maximum retention from your childhood in terms of whether it's any lesson or it's any learning that you've had or any experiences that you've had, all of them stem from a fact that when you were the most relaxed, when you were in a state of play, when you were happy, right? And, 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 and that's when the limbic brain was suppressed and the prefrontal cortex was open and that's where you actually absorb the most. So uh, we started studying up on uh, gamification and the entire concept of neuroscience of play. And we saw that it's an extension of what we are doing. In fact, it makes it that much more effective and that much more fun. And we were also transitioning at that point up into a product space. So there the gamification company was born. Our, our objective very largely is to bring about transformation in a nice fun way and also societal. Uh, actually, our long game plan is to bring about transformation at a societal level at a societal behavioral change level. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. So I want to take this opportunity to share my story. If you, if you give me a chance to do that, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, why are we three here? I mean, that's, that's, that's an important connection and I don't know how uh, well to explain it than the story of the school that I started, right? So I, um, whenever I talk to uh, Mr. Uday, who, who, who is um, leading or is the CEO of uh, the AIC, um, uh, I always tell him that I, I have a startup where I don't have to think about the funds. So that's, that's the best place to be in. But it was a startup. And yesterday when, I, when we had our farewell for the first batch, and in fact, a student said, you know, we started from one class in one lab and the school has grown with us. Now, this is the story that I like to tell. And what is it about design? So when Rajiv is saying that this is what uh, uh, is needed in the profession or it's needed for transformation digitally or otherwise, um, we need to see that what is the profession of design, right? Because that, you know, if that is at apex, then this is, will come after that. And then if that is the profession, then how do we educate for that profession? And that's where um, I was trying to think, which is uh, uh, as, uh, as a designer, what is the most user-centric way I can be aligned to today. And that's when we started. Uh, up, um, and th there is an experience economy, there's a digital, uh, almost a push everywhere, like from IoT to AML to um, natural language processing, and uh, of course, alternate realities. And design uh, always has been about, uh, design education rather, has been about designing the mind, to create a design mind for uh, tangible things. So for projects, for uh, products, for uh, maybe visual design, which you can touch and feel. But now it is about unseen, intangible. And how do we create design minds for this untangible solution space? So that's where we started. And that's why we have a multidisciplinary program, which actually looks at a transdisciplinary approach, which means you're looking at business, technology, sciences, which is ethnography, social sciences, cognitive sciences, and seeing what's the best way or what's the best way, way possible ahead, which is sustainable, of course, to uh, design around for, okay? And that's, that's our course, basically. Another factor is, um, which you again mentioned, is about people. People is not a herd. People is an individual. And that's what education should be. And today's, um, the education policy, uh, the new one is actually propagating that. So what we are saying is we don't want to build a herd. We want to build an individual that can meander around a generalist view of design in the current facade uh, landscape or a specialist view of design, right? So what's the specialist view of design? Again, which I would springboard to you is um, gamification is a domain, okay? Uh, earlier, we had streams of product design and visual communication, but I think we are now being more domain-specific design. So everybody, everything is an experience, but we could do an experience to new, using the neuroscience approach. We could use, uh, do an experience solution uh, for IoT and so on and so forth. So how do we build this complexity of being generalist and specialists, okay? And allow the student to choose. And the third part, most important is, you know, three of us are here together with complete different expertise, but having a wonderful, or at least 
had a wonderful conversation before and we are just trying to talk again. Uh, and that is because we are lines are blurring. So uh, design expertise works with an engineer, uh, works with a scientist uh, uh, like yourself, or will work with a business um, person as well. So how do we blur those boundaries? And that's what the school is about. And I'm really proud to say that we have completed four years and we have got 100 plus in placements there. So that's, um, dear viewers, um, good evening again, if you've joined late, but that's the connection between three of us, the school, um, uh, the AIC, and... Uh, Mr. Rajiv's, the gamification company it doesn't have to be, it's not anything to do with real, real games, but games that really bring you a lot of value. With that said, um, do you want to chip it, add in on this or should we, I want to. I, I would love to. I mean, this is getting into a very interesting sort of, a, so surely uh, what I could really uh, gather, and I believe that's very important, the audience that we have out here. It's more uh, startups, uh, budding entrepreneurs, maybe faculty members, and someone really trying to understand exactly um, how to bring that change, right? I mean, out here, what we are really th thinking, what we are, we are really talking about is thinking as a process. I believe that that's very important. Uh, the second part is uh, we talked about uh, certain. Uh, aspects of it which is which are intangible out here even the gamification i mean it's an experience that we want to really give even the school out there when we say design that's an experience uh, which is again intangible and in business world what really matters is uh, tangible products uh, and um, thinking only from the terms of rois and stuff around it uh, i believe that um, uh, that's one of the important element whenever you want to. And then this is about bringing sustainable change, right? True. Uh, which, which is a very interesting element to this entire uh, discussion because I'm sure a lot of people out there are listening to us and would think that, hey, how can I bring that change? Or uh, so entrepreneurs, I always say, are created because they want to challenge the status quo, right? I mean, they really feel that something needs to be changed. And what they have is... Um, the mind power, the thinking hat, which they really need to wear. And that could really come in with intangible sort of solutions as well. Uh, I think that's what uh, we really need to uh, see that uh, there is more to uh, what has been there available out there. Uh, I, I think it's more about your thinking process and certain concepts or fundamentals of neuroscience. I believe that maybe we really need to go back to our uh, ancient uh, schooling times and then those concepts that really need to, I think TGC really works on those concepts as well, wherein they have come up with very interesting products around it. And I am sure uh, um, maybe when we say IoT and uh, uh, certain concepts, AIs and all those stuff, uh, it, it was there, right? In a way that uh, now we, we are using those terms. It was there way back in India, uh, in Asian times. I think that's where we really need to see that how we, we can really bring those concepts, those fundamental things back and uh, make this a better world uh, through those concepts. I, I think that's that's important out here. And that's where we three, uh, because we keep on discussing about these things and we really believe in this, that if at all, if one person can take this up, um, it's all about movement. And I think we can bring that particular change uh, in the minds of people uh, that think think differently and uh, maybe certain intangible aspects are there. Uh, maybe you may not get the immediate results, but uh, you will see that. Uh, so for a school, it's as simple as uh, placement is one part of it. But when your student will do well uh, with certain corporate or start something uh, of his or her own, that one change is bringing a lot of positive uh, mindset to them. Yeah. I, I think that, that that's important out here. So yeah. just, just yeah. wanted to connect. I believe that about certain jargons or certain things that we use, um, make it much more oriented towards why we are uh, discussing this. And this is possible. And we have seen this happening through uh, three entities coming together and uh, created a sort of uh, impact uh, through our uh, activities. So I think that's what I just wanted to bring that element. Sure. All right. All right. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot, Uday. That that was a valuable connection that you made. Yes, Rajiv. Actually, uh, Uday, very interesting. And I actually want to um, bring in a slightly different thought process right now. And and we keep talking about uh, thinking and design being intangible. And having been and I mean having been an incubator with AIC and a partner with uh, Lim School of Design, 
and also being a businessman and also being a corporate uh, uh, business professional i can actually cha- i can actually challenge that because my experience with both the institute as well as with aic and from that thinking process i can give examples of how that is actually giving tangible results what we always thought about uh, being intangible and hence you will see it in the longer run i can confidently tell you that that's not the case so and, and that's something that you'll get to see in immediate term and it needs to go into your and because so many startups as a part of see i'll tell you if you remember when we started our interaction that was i think 2019 and we were talking and 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 we became a part of the entire uh, uh, program post 2000 that's right and when we became a part of the program and <laughs> they gave sir a presentation on the kind of products that we were looking at that's when they actually went to a dip, drill uh, deep down the first thing they said is you are underestimating because what you're doing has a capacity to uh, uh, to 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 uh, capacity to build capability in the, at a national level so you should be thinking from what you're building from a, a national capability uh, building perspective not from a you're bringing in a corporate mindset i think the biggest challenge that you will face being having been in the corporate for almost 28 years is that you're bringing in a very very business very very corporate mindset into an arena into a particular product which has a has a national yeah. scope and and that is a very important factor i'll tell you why because our entire design basis was factoring for maybe 100000 200000 users and uday sitting there was talking about uh, a couple of million uh, uh, users and 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 that's a big shift you know when you talk about maybe 100000 users 200000 users and and there is somebody who's saying that you should start thinking about uh, 3 million users which is 30 lakh users or, or 35 lakh users your entire design basis will go through a change your entire product design basis will go through a change and by the way that was a big uh, impact on us because we then took that specific product back into a complete redesign and we realized that if we had gone on the path that we were going in we wouldn't have been able to scale up so it's gone into such a big redesign that it's something that's going to get over this year and go into a formal launch next year that one specific platform which is skill money by itself and uh, and that made a big impact you know so uh, it's a tangible impact because you suddenly change the scales uh, just a difference in a thought process is a huge tangible impact now let me also give you the example of our experience with uh, nims and uh, i i think uh, there uh, uday i can't thank you enough for introducing me because when the first time when we went and you you said you should go and meet etc i said okay let's go and all of us as founders we uh, went across to the school we went with a fairly open canvas we didn't really have anything in mind but somewhere the perception existed because we speaking about design design school so we expected to see a lot of graphic artists uh, graphic design happening and in that one visit we started realizing that hey this is not an institute which focuses on graphic design because for every conversation that we were having and every uh, example that we were seeing what we were able to see a far more deep thinking that has gone into a deep research that has gone into a deep insight that has gone into understanding the human mind and hence making the product that much more applicable right and and the reason i think this is very very important is because what happens with entrepreneurs and this is and i'm speaking as an entrepreneur uh, our products are our babies right and our baby is the prettiest to us there is no denying it i mean our baby is the best looking baby in the world and that's why we fail because if i was paying for my own baby and and i was going to make millions out of it then it was a different case uh, but i need the world to actually pay the money i need the world also to say that hey here is where you got the prettiest baby you got the most effective product and and this is this product is really giving me a uh, serious results and hence i'm willing to pay money and i'm willing to pay premium and i'm willing to actually invest in it right entrepreneurs tend to always think inside out and how much ever we say that we've done research and we've identified a gap but the product when we are building we land up actually building it more from our vision of what the gap is and that's where a realization came in when we came to your school is the 
amount of deep research and insight your students go into. And, and, and that's when we started associating. And when your students actually started interning with us, every single one of them worked with us on a live project. And when I say live project, uh, one was a straight client delivery and the other three projects are projects that we are launching as our own products where they actually interacted with the clients. And the most important difference that we saw is the difference that they bought in was that again, that deep research and the insight from the client's perspective, from the user's perspective, right? And that was a differentiated thinking. And, and that is again, tangible because one of the products that we de delivered for an international client of ours, uh, the BR School of Environment, uh, they are looking at a global launch launch on that particular product in the month of October. And on the back of that particular October uh, of that particular product, an organization that was mainly designed as a non NGO kind of a not for profit organization is now actually launching as a commercial organization. And this one product that we launched for them is the product that is spearheading their entire move. And they're launching it in Africa, North America and Middle East. And we will be their India partners. So that again, it's been a tangible shift for us. So, uh, my thought here is to all the budding entrepreneurs is what we normally always think that design thinking uh, or maybe behavioral sciences or, uh, or a sustainable behavior change that we want to bring about. These are not intangible factors. They have to go into your initial thought process because they will start giving you immediate tangible returns. Uh, that was a long uh, explanation, but I needed to bring uh, context in, in terms of how uh, what we normally say intangible, it's not. It's actually very, very tangible. Yes, I, I do understand. And it's nice to know that design plays this catalyst role. You know, I, I really believe today after being into this profession for about three decades that, you know, starting from face lifting something to be, uh, to actually strategizing and then doing uh, the catalyst role, right? So I think that's where design is today and the toolkit of a designer has definitely changed. What, what I'd like uh, to share my experience here, because I do mentor startups and, you know, we've had these long discussions and uh, what I know, and which is exactly like you said, that we reverse engineer all the data to show what that our product is valid. But when we, when we launch it, it's finally the user who decides what he or she wants to do. So that's when it's very, very critical to disassociate from the product. And that's something we teach our, uh, we are taught as designer. How do you be agile to let go what doesn't work? In fact, the word pivot came from the startup uh, uh, world, but uh, that's something that I rarely see happening, uh, which is, uh, which should be accelerated because that the more pivots you do, the more user centric you get and which has to be of course data driven. So I think that's, uh, that's centric. But um, what I also like to say here is user centricity is on different value systems. Like it's not only about empathy to users, but it's also using sciences to do that because most of the uh, solutions or the products that a startup is bringing is also could be future scoped. And how do you then predict Futures. So there is also a concept of design futures, where we actually do a, a, a modeling on what the future would be. And that I agree with Rajiv should be the start. And it should begin at the seed of any startup uh, proposal. But having said that, things are changing. I can see a lot of uh, uh, startups having a designer as a founder as well. I also see startups hiring designers to be a part of their core group. So I think the world is changing and changing for the better. And the uh, toolkits that designers are now bringing um, are, are really working. And we all work through what we call as participatory design. So we are collaboratively creative, which is another thing that is important in designers' toolkit. It's not about me being creative, but how do I make Rajiv and his team creative? And that's, that's something that we uh, really look at. And I'm glad you brought this up because uh, this is also a fundamental uh, shift in my thought process when I actually started uh, doing sessions with startup about a decade ago and I thought I'd look at some stats and you are very right. I really thought startups failed because of no funding, no good people, but you know, the stats were very different. The stats were, I think, 87 point something percentage failed because the product failed. Like the whole offering did not 
work, right? And that was something that jolted me. And I said, oh my God, this is like a design challenge. And that's how we need to associate. So um, I think what I want to uh, bring here is, I know uh, Udbe's journey in this AIC is completely collaborative and uh, participatory. I mean, he just fundamentally works with people, right? And gets people together and sparks up energy. Then how, how do both of you, I mean, I can start with Rajiv, how do you look at this part? I mean, how, how is your journey in startup being participatory? Is it just you co-founders who developed this? How did you work this through? Actually, uh, for us, it's been a participative journey through and through. And okay. Interestingly, not a single product of ours. I mean, while, okay, fine, the concept of gamification is something is something that we bought in. We we actually, one of the niche companies in, in, in the country today, or for that matter, even globally, which is able to marry the principles of gamification with uh, the value creation process and appreciative inquiry process. And we actually bring the entire thing together and we uh, design our solutions accordingly. But uh, the participatory process has been, uh, is our collaborative process has actually been in a, a foundation for us because every product that we have developed, for example, our platform, one of our platforms, which is Corobus, uh, which is a, which is one of your awards and it's also the most successful platform that we have currently, which is now actually getting, uh, which is the rollout globally is happening. Uh, the products actually got developed with the clients. And, and it's not something that between the founders, we sat together and we did some uh, market research activity. And then we said, okay, here is a gap and here is what our product is designed, et cetera. Sure, we did the market research to see sustainability of it. We did uh, a lot of research. Uh, we did a lot of design to ensure that all the, the user experience, et cetera, is getting mapped. But the application of the applicability of the product or the relevance of the product, and that's where I bring back the entire uh, return on investment. Uh, that product should de uh, deliver a return of investment to the user, to the client. And those elements came from our clients. Our clients actively participated with us in our entire product development journey. They partnered with us. They participated with us. And obviously, it has to be a very, uh, uh, what can I say? It has to be a very synergistic uh, relationship because they are partnering with us. They need to see added benefits eventually when the product comes out. And all of that has happened. But it's happened in a very collaborative manner. That is from a client perspective. Also, if you think about it uh, today, uh, I mean, Manisha, you and I actually are going to patent one of the products. I, I'm not sure when uh, that is going to see productization per se, but I know that there is a gap and we are in conversation with organization, but we're going to, so that again is a collaborative process. So we are not islands and the, that, that time is over. If you think that I'm going to operate alone and I'm going to come out with something magical, that time is over. You have to work with your clients. You have to work with your partners. You have to work with your mentors. And only then will you actually get a composite product which or, or uh, which will actually be applicable, right? So, yeah, I mean, it, there has to be collaboration with the stakeholders, but I also feel that going forward, when you're working with a complete uh, user, like B2C, you need to bring in your users as participants, participants to this journey as well and I, that would be an interesting take as well so uh Uday, do you want to chip in uh, on this participatory bit of uh, startup so as, as an entrepreneur or as, or as a founder i think what's important uh, is i believe that you know your landscape you know your stakeholders very well if at all if you can gauge that i think uh, again uh, because what you are going to do uh, or what you are working on is uh, solving a problem right and this is like uh, very important to you at the beginning but you would find like-minded people and that's where the entire community would be built so i always have believed believed in community building approach right from um, my uh, experience at national entrepreneurship network Vadwani foundation wherein we used to work with faculty members and campuses and then see exactly how we can build uh, or create a pool of entrepreneurs through such vibrant community as such I think that's that's very important because that's where I think your purpose will come in. And if at all, uh, you are very clear right from the beginning, and that's where that's a tip to entrepreneurs as well, that uh, along with uh, building the product, it's also important that you go out uh, on the field. I mean, now it's maybe through online uh, sessions, but you go out and talk to people and that's where you would improve, right? At the end of the day, it's all about improvement and moving to the next level with the help of others. You can't, you're not going to do it alone. 
for sure. And it's a journey, which I believe that um, I'm sure about it. And that's where the sustainability comes in. Right. Uh, the collaborative aspect of it will bring in sustainability. I think that's an important thing. And while you both were discussing, I was just kind of, I said, this is, this is interesting wherein we are talking of intangible, tangible and all that. And one of the things that came in is a, a very simple um, word, a leap of faith, right? I think that's yes. the important thing of yes. the behavioral aspect of it. And that that's all, all, almost has been cited at a lot of research papers as well. That leap of faith, when you say that, and then when you really move in as an entrepreneur or as a, as a founder, and uh, you make that particular effort, I think that that's again a change in your behavior and change in kind of looking at what existing things are and how you want to really change it and make it much more uh, better in the society. Yeah, but also the leap of faith uh, is also uh, should be corroborated with uh, these sciences, with data, right? And uh, I think that's uh, where all that we were talking about come in. You know, I bet, I mean, initially it was watching and observing uh, the users, which we should do, but it's also about bringing in cognitive science in it, you know, and at a larger platform. So um, let's. I cannot let's, agree more to that. <laughs> let's talk about sustainability. I mean, uh, we're trying um, to keep ourselves afloat in this pandemic, and that has brought and it had a fall through. I mean, we we thought we were opening up and things would change, but of course things have changed. I mean, work have, work from home probably might be something that is um, that is the new normal, but there are also efficiency levels. What kind of products we will use? Some businesses have just gone out of business, I must say. So in this um, whole platform, what do you think uh, or what's your view on your aspect, the neuroscience on of play how can we build in efficiency and thereby sustainability in this new normal what right. would you have to offer so if you if you think about uh, both efficiency and sustainability as key outcomes that you're expecting and and that can then be translated into uh, in, uh, into revenues into cost savings etc whichever way you look at it but if these are the outcomes uh, from uh, from a do perspective what becomes very very important is that people who are working from home need to feel that much more engaged because now organizations need a higher level of ownership and higher level of accountability from people who otherwise were sitting in their offices, but now are sitting at home under a whole lot of different uh, circumstances. Now you're expecting a higher level of ownership, a higher level of accountability from people who otherwise are not used to working from home or even if they're working from home are working from home in certain environments, which are not necessarily very conducive for a work from home perspective. Uh, uh, I mean, not everybody has a secluded room. Not everybody is able to put on a camera all the time. Not everybody can have you no know, ambient noises coming in from everywhere. And, and there are enough and more distractions. And in a typical Indian household, the distractions can be anything. It can be people constantly ringing the doorbell to the servants doing something and the smell of food. Let's not forget that uh, our Indian cooking has very strong flavors and aromas built into it. Right? So under those circumstances, it's very, very important for people to stay engaged. It's only when you stay engaged are you able to uh, uh, to show those higher levels of ownership and accountability. Now, that's where we come in. How do you stay engaged? Now, to build that particular engage, all of these uh, factors which are, which are taking your brain into a state of uh, resistance, disengagement, etc., is where the entire gamification element comes in or the neuroscience of play comes in. How can you make those five hours, six hours, seven hours that you're sitting in in front of the laptop and you're constantly working? Can you can you change the environment for that person? It's not necessary that uh, when I say neuroscience of play, it always has to be a game. It has to be some kind of points of biases, but it has to be an environment. It's, that's why it's a science. Can you create that environment of play so that my engagement levels don't shift? Now, that's where we come in with our solutions. So. Uh, that what we are trying to do is, especially in these scenarios, is that how are you constantly using the whole lot of different, op you are aware of optalysis, which we talk about the core eight drivers uh, that exist and that make us drive, uh, make us behave in certain manners. So those core eight drivers, how do you use those core eight drivers to actually ensure that you remain engaged through the day and, and hence you're actually uh, optimizing your uh, outcomes or your behaviors. And that's where we come in and that's what our solutions are focused on. That's interesting. I think um, 
that will bring us uh, to actually look at how parallelly it works in education itself as well. In the last one and a half year, that design education has gone online. Now that has also been our outcome. How do you keep people engaged to do what they actually do as people in a premise? Because it's not about talk and talk in design and it's not about books. How do you do that? And that has been, and we did use the concept of play uh, a lot to keep, to keep it efficient. Another thing which I want to mention here, a student of ours in a module that I take has also looked at how can you keep a division of labor or me time when the parent, both the parents are working and there's a child there, right? Exactly what you said, that when you're at home, you can't differentiate between work and home. And how do you do that in the cultural context of India? And I think those are those few aspects that you can actually look at and time has come. And I take this uh, a platform to urge uh, all the startups to work for the new normal. I mean, how can we work uh, efficiently and sustainably? We've already got um, almost a, a tornado that has hit us with COVID and uh, we cannot have another one uh, hit us in the near future, whether it's calamity or if it's climatic or it is a man-made uh, virus or whatever, right? So with that said, I don't, I think we, need to use all these uh, sciences that are there and that's where the transdisciplinary approach comes in. Yeah. So um, I think uh, with that, I think Uday wants to chip in in one or two places because he's, as usual, very excited about some no, points. So in, in, fact, in fact, the point that you raised, uh, which, which I believe at this moment, uh, so one, I believe that self, I think that's more important in a way that you are looking at the situation and then uh, seeing the challenges that are being around. Uh, how do you make yourself more uh, susceptible or uh, how do you make yourself more strong in this scenario? Um, uh, I, I believe we really need to really work around on that. And then first it's self and then moving on to your colleagues, team members, family uh, around it. Um, but, but as an entrepreneur or as an incubator, again, we would see this as opportunities because what this really means is a lot of uh, challenges or problems that are around. We may look at a lot of solutions now coming in from entrepreneurs uh, and uh, TGC, again, I mean, can come up with a lot of products around it as well or uh, more than the products rather than the concepts around it. Uh, they are working on something uh, which is uh, on the greener energy or uh, the, I, I think that's, that, that, that's a new norm, right? In a way that uh, everyone's going to look at sustainable development goals. Yes. Everyone's going to look at, I mean, we, that was not there a couple of years back. Uh, but but that is most important, I believe. And uh, another thing, I feel that um, this has really led us to be more global now, uh, rather than looking at only uh, particular problems which is restricted to your local areas or region or maybe uh, at national level. I think this is somewhere uh, there would be a lot of opportunities and then that's where more and more people will collaborate, not just sitting, uh, I, I can sit anywhere uh, in tier three, tier four uh, city. And then that's where we have seen Zoho's and uh, the best of the models, right? I mean, uh, the founders of such organizations going back to their sort of hometowns and then working from there and software giants, I mean, moving on to that and then uh, giving a um, lot of freedom to their employees to work from anywhere. Uh, and they can be with the family as well. Again, that was missing. I mean, while people were migrating to um, metros and bigger towns was the large pay scale, uh, but what they were really sort of compromising all was on family time. Now with that, I think let's look at this that as an opportunity and I'm sure uh, we should be able to sort of, but the most important element out here, I think that's um, what pandemic has really brought us is uh, simply, I mean, sit back and then see exactly what all things that we are doing it, which are right, which, are, which can be improved. And uh, that's where we would bring that change. And uh, uh, it, it requires just one person to bring in that particular sort of uh, change, right? And then I'm sure that will um, that, that we are seeing through a lot of startups and corporates as well, uh, which I believe that with the change in the HR policy, that's again a behavioral science part of it, uh, which, which is going to be the next uh, important thing to tackle with uh, and not 
once the event has happened i think now we'll have to really think that maybe two years down the line what are the other things that may happen and accordingly uh, look at those things and that's what entrepreneurs always look at uh, that it's not a solving a current problem but maybe what's there three or five years down the line as opportunity then problems um, so i just wanted to kind of um, add in here uh, and that's where you spoke about design and with that uh, maybe um, would like inputs from you as well as uh, rajiv out here uh, that we started creative entrepreneurship uh, a curriculum at design school and the thought process uh, which you said right at the beginning I, in in between our discussions you said that you you were mentoring startups and you saw them missing the design element and that's where we thought that uh, and that's where uh, i saw stanford's and um, the best of the b schools out there in the us uh, what they really do is if you want to really become an entrepreneur then first thing that you really need to know is design thinking principles uh, and that's where out here uh, i also thought of that rather than looking at uh, entrepreneurs uh, that we introduce design thinking principles or design concepts let's look at a school which is already uh, building a curriculum which is already there as a design school and they already know about the user experience user interface and all those particular part of it now how about imbibing entrepreneurship skills in them uh, I, i think the results have been kind of pretty much interesting in a way that now they can think and act like an entrepreneur as well and that's where uh, our idea was not just uh, about um, imbibing those entrepreneurship skills but again the startups uh, or incubators that we are working with if at all uh, those students can go with that mindset that they can think uh from a perspective of an entrepreneur or a founder if at all and uh, i'm sure the interns that uh, rajib is hiring uh, they have gone through the creative entrepreneurship so that's a change in the mindset and they are thinking like entrepreneurs now uh, so that is kind of two uh, sort of validations i just really wanted to know from you or what has been the impact of so uh, first things first i think the mirror image of what you brought to the table is interesting that we always we had a user centric view we had a project but we did not look at the, how to scale it to be a company or scale it to be a startup right i think that has brought a lot of uh, change in the mindset so you talked about a very interesting skill entrepreneurship skill it doesn't mean that you are a startup founder but you have the skill to think like that and in a part of our conversation i said that as design uh, education or even as a designer we we actually inculcate the mind we design the mind to be a designer right and these skills in given today's time is very important how do you think you can't have an idea that is or a solution that doesn't have the business proposition at all because it doesn't work like the words he used roi i mean the reason why rajiv finds it interesting to take our students and is doing it for the second year is that probably they are a mix of all of that and i would i would uh, give you that i mean if you had asked me this question 3 uh, years ago maybe i don't have validated answers right but today i do today i have two years of validated answers which says that students have changed their mindset you know when they did their graduation project they looked at um, the business modeling the canvas and they said how can i build this to a company it's not about an idea and a solution or tangible or intangible it's about how do i take it to the world which really was my dream when i uh, you know met you for the first time i said you know uh, actually designers create something new all the time and why there are no startups who are designers it's always a manager or an engineer or somebody else and that's how we started this whole thing and i can tell you uh that it is on a positive run what we did as an, an experiment it has really worked and i think rajiv can um look at it from the the other side the outside because the students are then going to him and he would be more valuable to give you more data uh whether that's worked or not for, but from our side that thinking process has changed and that's for the good yeah that's for the good right i think uh, i think uh, now that you've introduced that course in many ways i think it's an extension of possibly uh, what was at a very subliminal level already happening within the institute uh right. it, Uh, because these kids when they come in and when and i'm telling you from a first hand experience of having gone through one entire batch of uh, students who work with us uh, they bring in a completely different uh, thought process and the beauty of that is they are able to bring in that entire 
thinking and the design thought process, not just from a product or a design aspect, but they are bringing in that particular thought process from an overall business perspective or usability perspective. And uh, and these are the Gen Z guys, you know. So the Gen Z, unlike possibly the millennials who are very questioning, Gen Zs are dialoguers. So they have an opinion, they have a completely different thought process, and they are willing to challenge you. So I think the challenge lies in in possibly entrepreneurs and corporates who are taking these uh, these young uh, minds on board to be able to handle that dialogue. And and because these 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 students are coming in very strongly enabled to think differently, to bring in design thinking, bring in the entire behavioral sciences thinking into deeper levels, not just at product levels, but into a deeper level, into why, how, into how is this going to be a business, how is it going to be from a longer term perspective. That may land up challenging a lot of people and especially a lot of entrepreneurs who possibly have created a vision of how their product is supposed to be. So the challenge will lie in our ability to engage with them in a dialogue and accept those thought processes. It's not, and then by the way, they are not averse to uh, their thoughts not being accepted. They are pretty accepting in that, but they want to have a dialogue. And, and that is a challenge for most people, uh, especially whether it's entrepreneurs or corporates, to be able to have that dialogue. I totally agree with that because, sorry, I think I unmuted myself a little late. I was saying I totally agree with that because whilst we say that a startup and agility is like goes hands in hand, what my experience has said that the agility in changing the solution that you're offering should be the key. I mean, it's not about being able to uh, move in different places, work in different environments. It's actually what you're offering should be agile. Uh, and that's actually what pandemic taught us, right? Suddenly, every the if you see the um, the graph of digital uh, transformation in India, especially, right? It has just peaked in. I mean, it's just gone overboard in this last one year. You know, right from your grocery mom and pop stores to larger companies, we have just got into digital transformation as fast as we could to hold our businesses. But having said that, I mean, that's a that's a topic we need to discuss at some other, um, you know, discussion panel or Bachi. It is, how do you do user-centric digital transformation, you know? But it nevertheless, I would say that cognitive science, behavioral sciences, um, the study of ethnography, anthropology, these all just make it more robust. You know, it's not about what I feel, what I see, but it's about what really works. So I think that's um, what I would, we have already gone 30 minutes overboard, but I think uh, that was expected when three of us are talking, but have, nevertheless, uh, that's what I want to leave with, you know, do it. Like, you know, we all talk about a lot of things, but what we talk about should be in what we do and, uh, and face, like Rajiv said, it will be rejected, but that's fine. That rejection teaches us something more. And that's what design brings to the table. And that's what I like about startup, that the agility to be able to pivot. And, um, you know, uh, as a mentor there, um, that's what I would like to do, probably add my value and two bits as design as a thought process and not design as a tangible outcome. But like I said, the thought process leads to a tangible end outcome, which Rajiv has so well outlined in this talk. So uh, over to you, Uday. I think um, before yeah, you so just... Love to, would love to uh, listen to Rajiv's uh, maybe parting thoughts as well, exactly. What, what does he think? Uh, and then him being a sort of uh, an entrepreneur, ha having different perspective, gone through our incubators, our cohort, and others in the ecosystem as well, because they are helping and they've gone through mentoring process as well. Maybe your word of advice, a couple of uh, important things that uh, startups or budding entrepreneurs or anyone out there should really look into at this uh, challenging times. Right, so I think uh, keeping in line with uh, the context of what we were discussing, the entire concept of uh, bringing in design thinking, sustainable behavioral transformation. My one thought and which comes from uh, some really hard knocks of being an entrepreneur. Uh, and you have always learned from that only. It comes from the fact that, uh, you know, don't limit the entire concept of uh, behavioral transformation, neuroscience and design thinking only to your product level. 
you see it needs to go deeper into your entire value system as an organization into your entire business strategy as an organization because it does not if it does not go into your value system and your into your business strategy you can be rest assured that the products will not uh, also come out the way it ideally should come out the entire the concept of design thinking and the entire concept of behavioral transformation or use of neurosciences has to be at a more core uh, foundation level of the organization itself wonderful i think that very important yeah uh, yeah i think uh, uh, it's about uh, like uh, if i can you know uh, chip in here i think design or any startup it's it's if you see it's the you you say right the dog looks like the owner right many a times we see that but a startup or the founder has a lot of him or her in in the product that is happening i think that is where uh, it would substantiate what you said that culture is very important it's at the core but the point is how does the founder then take it as a culture of his organization and it could be very well said but to end this um, uh, just a, another parting thought is sustainability is not green only what we were talking about is sustainability uh, at the scalability level you know what good can you do to a person first that's one individual then he to a team and the team to a company and the company to a society i think that's that's something that we all should work towards and you know we'll be happy to contribute so wonderful so wonderful so thank you so much professor manisha thank you rajiv it was really wonderful as a sutradhar i mean i i never felt that it's like a sutradhar sort of a role that i'm playing as a part of discussion and all but just want uh, everyone uh, all the viewers to know that why we are keeping this conversations is we have certain best practices uh, built between us uh, as three entities so we have a design school we have our incubate and we have the incubator if at all if anyone is really wanting to be a part of this movement as collaborate we are always ready to look at such collaborations uh, very important that's the first message that i wanted to give the second message i, I believe is uh, around uh, it's not just about thinking we guys uh, what we have we are doing or what we have been trying is all experimenting first we have certain validated data as well and the third part is execution so we are implementers it's not just only to the, the thinking part of it uh we have we have tried out different things all the three organizations and we have learned a lot through this process and that's what uh, this conversation was important so that everyone within the community know that we are there to support and we can replicate this models anywhere i think that's that's also important so uh, as a individual capacity we can be there as mentors as uh, uh, sort of as organization level we can really tie up collaborate Uh, and then work together for the benefit of the larger uh, society i think that's what professor manisha was really wanting to say so thank you so much uh, really wonderful we'll keep on having the baatcheet conversations um, last saturday of every month uh, we couldn't do this uh, last month because of technical glitches uh, but surely we will keep on continuing this conversations and really appreciate uh, the contribution from all the stakeholders and also our institution that is rambau malgi prabodini atal innovation mission niti ayo for being a part of it and uh, stay safe uh, get vaccinated at the earliest opportunity and ah that's true yeah yeah thank you so much thanks a lot everybody thank you so much right. thank you everybody